Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super super fun tag for you that was created by a new beautiful booktuber, Jessie Dawn. All of her stuff will be in the description box below. She is a wonderful Christian fiction uh, booktuber and she's new around the area and I absolutely love what she's doing with her channel. It's great and I can't wait to see what else she makes in this tag was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. She did an amazing job with the questions. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into the tag. So the name of the tag is the Fruits of the Spirit tag, and each one of the prompts is based around the Fruits of the Spirit. So there are nine prompts, and they're wonderful and really creative. And I would like a little disclaimer before we actually begin the tag. Um, there were a lot of books and a lot of options that I could have picked for all of these, but I was a good girl, stuck to it, and these aren't really, you know, my favorite, my all-time, but just, I decided to pick these. I tried to get out of sight of my comfort zone and use books from different genres and by different authors, so we'll see how it goes. Of course, there are all kinds of options for all of these questions, and I have multiple options for all of these questions. But again, I was good and kept it to one. So, there's that. <laughs> the first fruit of the spirit, or the first tag, is love, and that is name your top three favorite couples. And I didn't pick my top, top three. These three are some of my favorite. I have way too many favorite couples for me to have a top three. So I picked three of some of my favorite couples and I kept it to three. So be proud, be very, very proud. But these aren't like my top, top three because again, I don't have them. Does that make sense? The first couple that I'm going to talk about is Millie Longfellow and Everett Mulberry from In Good Company by Jen Toronto. They, I haven't read this book in a while, but I do remember absolutely loving them. Millie was hilarious. Uh, their dialogue was fun. Jen's characters overall, I could have picked any number of her um, couples because they're great. I fall in love with them just as quickly as they fall in love with each other. And I just loved the dialogue, and I loved Millie. She was crazy, and I've talked about this before. But these two are probably in my top favorites. I mean, they definitely are in a number of my favorites. The next couple I have talked about multiple times, and I will continue to talk about, and that is Lady Grace Indicott and Lord Brandon Roth. From The Accidental Fiancé by Mary Moore. And I love this book with every fiber of my being. Um, Brandon and Grace are great. Their banter is great. They are so witty. And, and these couple is just great. I love them so much. And the last couple I'm going to talk about, I haven't talked about in a while, if I've even talked about them on YouTube. I've talked about them in the other number of places. That is Travis Archer and Meredith Hayes from Short Straw Bride by Karen Whitmire. I have loved this book. I think this is like the first or second book that I read by her and absolutely loved it. I read this book multiple times. I love Short Straw Bride. It's, it gives me so much joy. Everything about this couple is great. I love their dynamic. They just, ugh, they're one of my favorites. I'll just say that. I can't go without naming one of her books. Travis and Meredith. OTP. OTP. The next fruit of the spirit is joy. And that prompt is name a character who went through horrible trials. Were they joyful and would you have been the same in that situation? The character I'm going to talk about for this prompt is Kane from The House on Foster Hill by Jamie Jo Wright. Again, I had so many different options for this, but something about this character just really stood out to me for this prompt. Um, Kane went through so much. Her husband was killed and she always felt that it was a murder and then she was stalked creepily so then she bought this house 
on Foster Hill that had so much history behind it. And there's just so many things and so many, like, creepy, weird things that kept happening to her. And so many horrible trials that she went through. And honestly, no. She did not stay joyful. Um, she was kind of bitter for a while, which is understandable. And I probably would have been the same way in her situation. She was scared and she believed things that other people didn't believe and she was hurt and she was mad. So there was a lot of trials that were coming her way throughout the entire book. Even though it was a, a dual century book, you got a lot of Kane's trials. But even her triumph as well because the end of the book was great. Um, but I probably would have been the same in the situation and neither one of us would have been joyful. Whoops. <laughs> the next fruit of the spirit is peace. And the prompt for that was name a river or a body of water that is important to the story. I'm going with Unblemished by Sarah Ella. I talked about this in my January wrap up, I believe. And I mentioned that a major part of the story, which is literally like the whole part of the story, is the second reflection. And to get to the second reflection, you have to go through water, a lot of the like portals. There's a big one that is a lake and it's a body of water and there's actually a huge scene based around this body of water. And then at the end of the book, uh, there is another scene based around a lake, the body of water, like that portal. There just are quite a few scenes where water is the way to get in and out of the world so I figure that that is a huge part of the story. So that is why I picked Unblemish. The next good spirit is Patience. And the prompt for that is name a book you, are, you anticipated or are anticipating reading. And for that, I actually went ahead and picked one that I anticipated and one that I am anticipating. Didn't really cheat for this category because, I mean, it's right there. So I just decided to read in between the lines. So the book that I anticipated was Out of the Ordinary by Jen Toronto. Don't shoot me, but I still have yet to read it. Um, I'm just like trying to hold it off because I love her stuff. But I have a new book coming out to quench my thirst in at the end of July, beginning of August. So I'm very excited about that and I will be reading this before that comes out. But this was a highly anticipated book for me, without fail. So definitely this one. One of the many, many books that I'm anticipating is, is The Hope of Azure Springs by Rachel Beckman. Um, I became friends with Rachel on Facebook and I saw her book in the catalog um, a couple months before I talked to her and I was like oh that sounds really cool and then we've become really good friends we've talked quite a bit and now I'm just you know talking to her and getting her writing style and her um, her messages and stuff and seeing her posts on Facebook I just know that I'm really gonna enjoy the book and I'm really really excited and I can't wait to read it it is her debut novel and I'm very, very excited for it. This is the cover. It's beautiful. And I'm really, really anticipating it. It is coming out in July. I know I have to wait. But it just gets all the anticipation bubbling. It's anticipation, anticipation, anticipation. I know English well. Yay. The next fruit of the spirit is kindness. The prompt for that is name a selfless character. And for this, again, so many options, but I wanted to go a little out of the box for me. I went with Jorgen Hartman from The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest. And I just felt like he was really selfless throughout the entire book. I mean, he was still, he was giving to orphans. He was still falling in love with this girl who was a poacher and even when he found out that she was the poacher he was so selfless in his actions toward her yes he was a little angry with her but that's totally understandable but he still was so selfless and kind and just 
he was a great character and I really, really enjoyed him and I felt that he totally fit into this category. The next Fruit of the Spirit is goodness and prompt for this is name a plot twist that had you like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so for this one I had, again, so many options, but I decided to go with Forward to What Lies Ahead by Chloe Flanagan. This I read and reviewed and loved. Um, I will be getting it in paperback soon so that I can show it to you and reread it. And it was so good. The plot twists in this, there were a couple that like happened in the beginning of the story and I was just like, <coughs> like I needed a couple days. It was, it was good, but it had me totally going, oh my goodness. It was great. Read it, get it. Love it. Yes. The Spirit of the Spirit is Faithfulness. And this prompt is name an author who you will buy their books without fail. Without question, just you'll buy them. This isn't fair um, because I have way more than one author that I will always buy from without fail. Um, most of the time I will, if an author has multiple books out, and I read and enjoy one, I normally end up falling in love with them as a whole and just buying all their books. So, there's that. So I just like, I buy most authors' books and I try to get like a whole collection of them. But, without fail, some authors that I am in love with and will always be in love with is Karen Whitmire, Jen Tirano, Julie Clausen, Tracy Peterson, uh, Christy Ann Hunter, Nina, like, I just have so many and so many that I want to collect all of their books. Like, I will just buy them because I've read a couple of their books and absolutely love them. And it doesn't matter because I will always and forever buy them. So, that's my answer. The next fruit of the spirit is gentleness. And that is, show us your most damaged book. And I'm actually pretty, pretty good with my books. Uh, I try not to damage them. I hate getting them already damaged. It kind of breaks my heart just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but I don't really have a ton of damaged books per se. I have one that was damaged in the mail, but I'm not going to show that because I'm slightly bitter about it. Praying through, praying through. I will get a new copy, so I won't be bitter about it, but that's a different story. Um, so I don't really have a ton of damaged books, but this one is one that I really, really need to read, and that is, that is Beautiful Joe by Margaret Marshall Saunders, and I actually have not read this book yet, but it is, like, falling apart, um... My grandpa actually lent me this book years ago, and I haven't read it yet. And I'm not sure if they remember lending it to me. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to give it back or if he gave it to me. I should probably figure that out, but I will after I read it. This is definitely one that I want to read. Um, my mom said it's one of the first books that she read, and she loved it. So it's definitely something that I want to read. I'm just so scared that it's like going to fall apart in my hands. But it's lasted the test of time, and it's just, it's well-loved, and I absolutely love that. And the last fruit of the spirit is self-control. The prompt for this is, name the strangest place you've ever read because you couldn't wait to finish a book. And for this, I just, I couldn't really think of an answer because I don't read in public much. Um, not because I'm, like, ashamed or anything, but it's kind of hard I have an older brother and a younger sister, and if we're in the car, we're all kind of messing around, and I don't really tune people out very well. Um, I get distracted pretty easily when I read, unless I'm completely engrossed in the book. I like complete quiet, so it's kind of rough for me to read in public because, you know, I get distracted. Um, I have my phone, and I'll read an ebook in the car every once in a while, or I'll bring a book, so maybe like the car, or... I don't, I don't know. I don't really have strange places because I 
don't read in public. So there's that. Sorry. So that was the end of the tag. I absolutely love the question. Thanks so much, Jesse, for tagging me. I absolutely love doing it. Um, I don't know who to tag. Jesse pretty much covered all the, the bases for tagging people. So I'll tag you guys. If you'd like to do it, I'd love to either see a video. If you do it, totally leave the link down below. I would love to check it out. Or if you do it on your blog, that would be super, super fun. I'd love to see that. Or even just leave the answers to the questions in the comments. I would love to read them. All the questions, of course, will be in the comments. And the link to Jesse's original video will be in the comments as well as up in the corner so you guys can watch it. If you guys check out my blog today, I am doing a wonderful review for a wonderful novella collection. And there might, or might not, be a giveaway at the end of that. So definitely go over check it out and maybe enter if you want to my blog is for the love of christian fiction .com, where i try to blog every friday my instagram is for the love of christian fiction go ahead and give me a follow i'm pretty active on there and i would love to hear from you guys all my other links are in the description box below and i think that's it i'll see you guys next week bye